Thank you guys so much for coming out. Uh, my name is Austin Phillips. I am the director of the Len Insel Tribute Day. Kind of a great opportunity for me to be here in London today with all of you wonderful people um, talking about these really wonderful figures. But the one thing I noticed through all of my adventures and through all my building is I would meet all of these really interesting characters. And everybody had a story. But the really, really cool bit was all of their stories had something to do with a Len Insel figure and how it kind of it changed their life, it, it fueled their passion, and it shaped them to be the people they were today. As I was saying, it's great to be here. Oh, yes, so great to be here today at the... Um, where are we again? Well, um, we're at the Len Insul Tribute Day. Oh, what's that? <laughs> we're celebrating the work of Len Insul. Yeah. Who's he? <laughs> Great. Um, Len Insel is quite possibly the most prolific British ventriloquist figure maker of all time. Wow. <laughs> Len. Yeah, Len. Len. Yeah, Len. Lenny. Yeah. <laughs> Leonard. Yeah. The Lenatron. <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe not. Is he here today? Len! Oi! Len! No, he's not here today. He's not, he's not here today. It's awfully rude of you to be celebrating without him. No, 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 no. He's, in, he's not alive anymore. <laughs> well, looking around, all these wonderful dummies, it's a bit like the House of Commons, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I should be looking at you guys, or uh, this yeah, wonderful yeah. crowd behind me. There you go. So I think you have the best ventriloquist doll in the world, but if the ventriloquist doesn't have those skills to make that doll come to life, then it's only ever going to be a ventriloquist doll. Mm. I'll try and explain to you what ventriloquism really is. This is the scientific thing. Go on, then. Right, okay. Ventriloquism, ventriloquism is a matter of controlling the respiratory oscillations of the, the abdominal muscular reflexes, together with the measure of reverberations emanating from the solar plexus. That's not an act, that's a disease, that is. <laughs> Repeat it. That's not an act, that's a disease, that is. The long words. The long words, the long words. Every and if all but. Every and if all but. Don't blame me, or just stand with yourself, Shaw. <coughs> then, then, then chicken it, then, then chicken it. Why the hell could he take a jump in or something? <laughs> Get on with it. Then chicken it, then chicken it, then chicken the respiratory oscillations, the abdominal muscular reflexes, together the nature of the generations, and the nature of the solar plexus. In an ascertaining or esoteric cogitations in articulating your suit of tissue sentimentalities, I'd say that's talking about the UK coal. Very good. <laughs> Thank you. Let me just check where I am in the script. I've lost my place. One second. Idiot. <laughs> um, so unprofessional, this, isn't it? Utterly rubbish. Right, OK, let's have a look. Where are you? Ah, oh, yes. You've got it now, haven't you? Yes, I've, I've got it. Yes. Yes, and that means I've got it too. So what I want to do is I want to explain how I work to all of you. Well, I was thinking maybe we don't do that. Um, originally, that was the original idea, but maybe not, because it might break the illusion. I think they might have worked out how this works. Right, OK. Well, go ahead then. Well, to make me work, I need a twit who likes to talk to himself to stand behind me and shove his hand in my back. Right. And I think there is one situated... Ah, there you are. Right. Get on with it. Now, I have three mechanical movements. That is, three mechanical movements. Well done, the lips didn't move much there. Um, right, now, oh look, they're applauding. Sad, sad people. Right, stop it. Stop it. I have three mechanical movements. To move my mouth, he pulls on a trigger. To move my eyes, like this, he pulls on another trigger. And when I do this, that means he's just touched my prostate. No! <laughs> no! Ladies and gentlemen, we're educating Archie. The audience listening figures regularly attracted over 16 million listeners, and the Christmas show in 1953 attracted a record 23 million listeners. I remember when we went to see Peter Brough. We, oh, yes. we saw him at Battersea Town Hall. Yes. 
We sat at the back, and from there I could see his lips moving. <laughs> he, he, it's, it's true, I mean, he was perfect for radio. And apparently, uh, Peter asked Beryl Reed if she could see his lips moving. And she said, oh, well, only when Archie's talking. <laughs> there was an auction. The, the Bruff family um, decided to sell Archie. And while I was there, this rather tall but very distinguished looking man <laughs> bought Archie. Can I say how much you paid? You may indeed, yes. Is it £32,000? It was 34. 34. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> and this gentleman bought Archie. So, um, sort of taken into account, but not completely, the commission that auction houses put on top, uh -huh. uh, which is a, a, a fair warning to everybody going to an auction. Work that out beforehand, oh, okay. um, because you're looking sometimes as much as 20% on top of the sale price. I'm just going to talk a bit about my collecting. Um, I was born in a time where I, I can't, couldn't go into Davenport and buy a figure. So when I see these things, it's trying to buy something that I had never had the opportunity to do that I wanted to do. So that's why I collect. It's a passion. It's a, I mean, half the thing about collecting is the hunt for an item, as Jeff has told me many times, and sometimes told me off of buying too much. But not of him. But um, I think I had the same feeling as Colin when I went to the Archie auction and was actually sat behind uh, Colin and his wife while they were nudging each other, bidding all this money, all their children's inheritance away. Uh, but luckily afterwards, after all the fuss and everything else, I was lucky enough to be able to buy two of the other Archie heads. So these are known as the variety heads because they have a few different movements on them. Because this one is a his tongue that sticks out like this. And uh, you can see he's got a nice wig on him there, like the original Archie. I think there's something about these Archie puppets that stands out from all the other insoles, and that's because they have real glass eyes in them and it gives them that pop. It's interesting because several people were chatting earlier on about um, the story. Um, old ventriloquist dummies, you know, and I think there's there's a point where you don't want to go too far. I mean, David knows far more about this than probably anybody, but there's a, a point where you can make them good and safe and preserve them for the future, but you, you mustn't try to get them back to new condition again, otherwise they're not the same ventriloquist doll. So there's a bit of a line there. For you. Paint them with the wrong uh, paint. And suddenly they seize up because, because Shami, it, when it come, becomes clogged. So <laughs> never the, the actual formula for the paint was disclosed, but in fact, um, it, uh, is, he, he mixed it himself, like everything. He made his own springs, you know, ev everything he could make himself. But he, he used uh, oil-based paint, actually. The matte surface was talcum powder, which, which gave the... the the surface, uh, a, a matte finish. A few of the insoles I found over the years that I really, really like are different ones, specials. And over here we have one which was found in the garage and was a present for <coughs> the president of the Magic Circle at one time. So this was a gift to him from the Magic Circle. And apparently it was in the back of a shed. So um, they got it out of the newspaper, and luckily it had actually survived, even though he's a little bit uh, stiff and probably needs a bit of WD-40 putting inside his head. That's my, really my, my little talk on collecting. Thanks very much. Actually, I don't even own a hard figure. Uh, hello? No, I don't own you. No, you, you were lent to me by David Wilde. You're part of the Wilde collection. Ah, yes, the Wild Collection. Yes, the Wild Collection. The Wild Collection! Yes, the Wild Collection. Why are you saying it like that? Because it's wild in the Wild Collection. Is it really? No, 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 it's more like a hospice for us. Hey, no, it's not true. 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 But anyway, when I went to collect you from David, I found out that you didn't have a name. No. I have no identity. He doesn't have a name. I am a man of mystery. Yes. 
he doesn't have a name. So I was thinking maybe I could discuss with you to get you a name today. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. So first off, do you have any ideas of what you might like to be called? Well, I really like the name Jedediah. <laughs> <laughs> Jedediah? Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, I was maybe thinking something a bit more traditional. I don't know, perhaps something like Jim? <laughs> Jim? <laughs> you don't like it? Right, okay. <laughs> okay, I get it. Uh, okay. I, I, I know that I'm dressed like a royal child on their first day at school and all that with a bow tie. But it's 2017 and no little boys are called Jim. That's like calling a baby girl Susan, because Susan makes you think she's a 46-year-old office worker for a slough. No, right. Okay, so maybe we need something a bit more vibrant. Yeah, yeah. Right, um, do you have any ideas? Um, let me think. Ah, I've got one. Yes? I like the name Nebuchadnezzar. <laughs> what? Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, no, I don't think so. I want to be called Nebuchadnezzar. No, you're not going to be called that, why ever not? It's really difficult for me to say without moving my lips. That's your problem. Right, OK. <laughs> I am Nebuchadnezzar. Right, I get it. Right, OK, I really hope you have enjoyed it. Um, my name's Max Fulham. And mine is Nebuchadnezzar! No, stop. <laughs> Thank you.